Hey everyone, Faiz here from Races with Dada. I hope you guys are doing well. Today, I am going to share with you the most important MoTeC channel that every driver should know of. Alright, so here is guys, the most important channel in MoTeC. It is none other than the Humble Speed Channel. At the risk of sounding super obvious, the Speed Channel displays how fast the car was at any given point on the track in a session. So typically this channel is displayed as a time distance chart where the speed of the car is shown on the Y axis and on the X axis is either the time or distance from the start. You can toggle uh, between time or distance mode in MoTeC by clicking the F9 button, like I'm showing to you now. And you can use that uh, red square down there to identify which mode you are in. Right, so let's jump in and have a look at the data. So we are now looking at the single lap trace, specifically the fastest lap that I did in this particular session. It's not very exciting and honestly, it's not at all useful at the moment. What makes the speed channel so powerful and so important and so useful is not looking at it on a single trace. What we should do is we should compare consistent lap times and then look at the trace. So let's do that now. So let's add in a few more data that is fairly consistent. Uh, the fastest lap that I did was a minute 56. 0.8 and what I'll do is I'll select lap times that are within 0.5 seconds of this. So anything faster than 77, uh, sorry, 57.3 I would select for this example. So now that I've selected the lap times that are within 0.5 seconds from the fastest lap time, so I'm going to filter them. I can do that by right clicking and uh, select show selected and now it only shows the lap time that I've selected. Right, and immediately you can see how this is powerful. Maybe it's not obvious, but let's go through what we're seeing. We're looking at the trace, the speed trace of fairly consistent lap times. But immediately you can see four areas where the lines do not converge. And what that means is that I'm not consistent at four areas. And we get all that information by just glancing over this one channel. We didn't have to do anything complicated, we just put them on top of one another and bam, we can already identify where we are consistent. And that really is the power of the speed channel. As a race, uh, as a race driver, we are always trying to find ways to improve. And here is a very quick and easy way to show where we are inconsistent and the, you know, the easiest the low-hanging fruits of where we can gain more time, right? So the next logical step for us is, okay, we have identified where we are inconsistent. The next step would be to understand why we are inconsistent. And here, I like to be a bit more critical and ask myself these questions. Why am I faster or slower at a particular lap? What did I do differently that made me go faster or made me go slower? And sometimes to answer this question, you might have to go back to the replay and check and find out what exactly you did. But most of the time, I think we already have an idea. As an example, this was done back in April and I already know, I can remember, I had issues with turn 8. And for turn 8, the issue wasn't like the brake marker, it was me not knowing how much to brake for that corner. And Clearly the data supports that. You can see that the break point is fairly consistent, but the break amount is not. I'm all over the place. And here the data really supports what I felt at that time. And now how do I improve or how do I make myself more consistent? Well, the next step is, all right, I should go through the data and find out what speed that I can take the corner, what's the highest speed that I can take the corner safely and work on improving my brakes, my braking performance so that I brake to that speed so that I can take the corner at a higher speed and be consistent. So we would continue to do this exercise for all the corners, all the problematic corners that we identified earlier. 
I won't do this for this example, but I hope you guys can see how you can use this to analyze and understand why you are inconsistent. And with that, you can be more critical of your driving and become a better driver afterwards. I hope this video helped you appreciate how powerful the Humble Speed Channel is in MoTeC. And yeah, the next video, I would expand on this. We will use the learnings that we did today and see how we can add one or two other channels to help us understand further why we are inconsistent. And that's it for now. Uh, if you find this video helpful, please do leave a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you like to see more contents like this. And if you have any questions about how to use the speed channel, how to do filters or anything, or any, any questions about Motec, please leave a comment and I will try my best to answer you as best as I can, right? So thank you guys, thanks for watching, hope you guys have a good day, see you in the next video.